friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today we are about halfway through the year. Can you believe it? It's already almost July or it is July. I don't even know what day I'm putting this up, but holy moly, halfway through the year. Today we're going to do the mid-year book freak out tag. I don't like the title of this tag because I don't really freak out at all when it comes to books, but it is what it is. I'm going to link the creator down below. It's a popular tag that a lot of people make every year and I always have fun taking a look at my year and how things are going. So let's do it. There are, I think, 13 questions and we are just gonna dive right in. The first question I'm already not really gonna answer for you <laughs> because I am gonna have a video where I talk about my top five books of the year and I didn't wanna let you know what those are right now. But two books that are not included in my top five but ones that I've really enjoyed are The Lightning Thief by, by Rick Riordan. I really enjoyed this middle grade book that somehow I missed out on. I never read it before. It's my first foray into Rick Riordan and I really enjoyed this fantasy. I thought our main character had a lot of growth throughout the story. I thought the fantastical elements were a lot of fun. There were some really clever moments uh, that I caught on to as an adult that I don't think I would have as a child reading it, but I just really, really enjoyed this. So I gave it five stars and that is one of my favorites of the year, but not one of my top five. And another one that I just finished the other day is The Last House on the Street. And I am only giving this four stars. I don't think the beginning caught, captured my attention as quickly as I maybe would have liked it to, but it did sucker punch me by the end dealing with the civil rights movement in North Carolina in the 1960s and a young girl who gets involved with the scope program where they go around in neighborhoods and try to get black people to register to vote once that was passed into a law and so this young girl struggles with the her desire to make change and to help change to happen but also her family is not on board at all and are very, very against it and um, the struggles of that kind of pull in both of those directions. And then we have a present day storyline where that young girl is now an older woman living on the street and Kayla is new to the neighborhood. Her and her husband just bought this house at the end of the road and there is a lot of history on the street and it's in particular on the land where Kayla and her husband bought their house. Her husband passes away off page before the story begins um, in an accident as they're building this house. And so her grief is a part of the story, but also she's learning more and more about events of the past and mainly involving Ellie, this woman who lives down the road. So I really enjoyed this. I thought it packed a huge punch and... I probably just talked about it a little bit too much. Part of history that we need to continue to read about and read books about and and have our eyes be opened. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I love Diane Chamberlain's newer books. I don't love all of her older ones, but those are two books that I have really loved so far this year. Number two is my favorite sequel that I've read this year. And I'm just going to say the whole track series. I read this whole series this year, but I did. The only one that I gave five stars to was the second one, Patina. This was my favorite one in the series, but all of them are fantastic. And they're fantastic on audio. These are by Jason Reynolds. The first one is Ghost. And then we have Patina, Sunny, can't even see the names where the way I'm holding them and then Lou and we follow these four kids who are on a track team it's called the track series and you don't have to know or care a lot about running to enjoy these books just know that it's about four kids in middle school slash early high school but I think mostly middle school on this track team and their coach and their family stories we get a, all four of them we get their backstory and what brought them to the team and the struggles that they have both in their families and at school and this coach who is fantastic, what a wonderful character, trying to, to help them grow up, but also coach them in track and becomes more of a mentor than just a coach to them. And it's a fantastic series. I highly, highly recommend it. So great, so great. Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet this year, but you really want to. And I have a bunch. <laughs> I do anticipated reads videos for each quarter. So I have quite a few already that have come out this year that I haven't yet gotten to. Two that stand out is one of them is a middle grade Olivetti. I just love the cover of this. I think it's stunning. And I think there's a sentient typewriter in this story that like 
types notes to the kid. I don't even know what the story is about, but because of the cover and the little bit that I've heard about it, I've heard some mixed things, but my friend Amanda loved it and I'm very eager to read it. And then also The Outlaw Noble Salt by Amy Harmon is one that I really want to read. This is her newest release and it follows uh, Billy the Kid who stops wanting to be an outlaw and wants to kind of straighten out his life and he uh, assumes a new identity, goes to a new part of the country, and yet kind of keeps getting drawn back into his old life for reasons. So I don't, I don't know much more than that, but I'm very eager to read more Amy Harmon. I love most of her books. And I'm hopeful that I'll love that one too. Number four is a most anticipated bo book that's coming out later in the year. Again, I have two. I'm, I mean, I shared a whole bunch in a very recent video that are coming out for this summer. One of them being The Myth Makers by John Hendricks. This is going to be a graphic biography of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien and their friendship and their writings. And I'm very excited for it. Um, it's not just a graphic novel. It's a mixture of prose and comic elements. So I'm really excited for that. And then later this year, we should be getting another Keeper of the Lost Cities book. I think it's going to be 9.5. 10, I believe, is going to be the last one. And we thought that that was going to be coming out next. All the other books are from the perspective of Sophie. And except for the other 0.5 that was in there, I think it was 8.5. So now we're getting another 0.5 because we need to have a little bit more of Keefe's story from Keefe's perspective. And I'm here for it, and I'm very excited. I think it should be coming out this fall. Number five is your biggest disappointment of the year so far, and I have two for this as well. One of them is Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kinzer. This is a Christian fiction romance. I had heard a lot of people who really love it, and I just was not one of those people. I didn't believe the chemistry or the romance between the two characters. It was all based on how they looked. It didn't ever really get deeper than that or deep enough for me to believe it. It was very insta lovey based on their looks. And also there was a few other things in the book that I didn't love. I had heard that there was going to be letter writing between them. I was thinking flat share. I was thinking you've got mail kind of energy and there just wasn't enough of the letters going back and forth to make that a highlight for me. And it just, it was kind of a big, wah, wah. <laughs> Big, big flop for me. And also The Spy Mistress by Jennifer Chavarini. I was really hopeful for this. It takes place here in Virginia. It is historical fiction about a strong female character who ends up spying for the Union armies, even though her whole family and everybody around her is on the Confederate side of things. So I was really hopeful for it, but I just was so bored. <laughs> I was really bored. I got about 20 or 30% in and I DNF'd it. I just didn't care. It was definitely, I said this when I did my wrap up, it was definitely more historical than fiction. So it didn't have enough of a story to draw me in. I, I wasn't drawn in by her writing. It just was too many facts, too much information, and I just didn't care. So I was, I was very bored by that one. So that was a bit a disappointment because I was pretty hopeful. And I have a couple other books by her on my shelf and now I'm even more hesitant to pick those ones up too. We'll see. Number six is your biggest surprise of the year. And I'm just going to say Al Capone Does My Shirts by Jennifer Cheldenko. I loved this book. <laughs> it made me so angry at times. It made me tear up at times. It made me laugh. I thought the writing was so clever. And yet when I look at this book, it does not draw me in at all. I only picked it up because it's a shorter middle grade and I was trying to read through a lot of middle grade books in the book in the month of March. But I ended up really liking this book. I loved our main character. I can't even remember his name, but this family moves to Alcatraz Island because the dad gets a job as a guard at the prison. There was a whole community there on Alcatraz and you kind of learn a little bit about that, quite a bit about that in this story. But this family has a sister, uh, the boy who's the main character here, his sister is on the autistic spectrum. I don't know that it's ever named or labeled in the book, but she has a lot of trouble with change. Not everybody on the island understands or appreciates her, but she's got a kind of a beautiful relationship with the boy, the main character. Character. And the mom in here is just the worst. <laughs> I was so mad at her. She wants the best for her daughter and for her son, but she really kind of ignores the son and puts way too much responsibility on him for the age that he is. And I was just, I was so angry with her multiple times. I wanted to punch her. <laughs> and so I love that this little book that I really was super hesitant to pick up surprised me so much and made me so emotional. I didn't love the second one as much, but I did really love that first one. 
Okay, number seven is a favorite new author. And I'm kind of cheating on this because it's an author that I have read before. Uh, but I've only read one book by them. It's Gary D. Schmidt. And I have read in the past Wednesday Wars, which I did really enjoy. And I have a couple others on my shelves by him. But just the other, just a couple weeks ago, I read Orbiting Jupiter. And now I kind of want to read everything that he's written. He is up there as like an, an author that I'm very, very intrigued by his his books and his works. I've I mean Katie has been singing in his praises forever. My my middle grade March co-host Katie Life Between Words. She loves the Wednesday Wars and the others in that series. I'm not sure exactly if they're straight sequels or not, but she has loved him and I have kind of fallen in love but based on Orbiting Jupiter, which I totally loved. I'm very interested in reading more from Gary D. Schmidt. So it's kind of new because I had read Wednesday Wars and while I did really enjoy it, I didn't want to dive right into everything else he'd written at that point. I just enjoyed that book for what it was. But now I'm very, very interested and eager to read more from him. So I'm counting that as a favorite new author because he's a new favorite. He's not a new author, but he's a new favorite. <laughs> Number eight is your newest fictional crush. And I'm just going to ignore that because I don't have anybody this year that stands out as, oh my word, what a great guy. Or I don't really get crushes while I read anyway. So I'm, I'm skipping that one. <laughs> but then we have at number nine, a favorite character from the year. I'm going to say Martha Ballard from The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan. I really loved learning about Martha Ballard in this book. She was a midwife living in Maine, and this takes place in the middle of winter and it is brutal and cold and it takes place what year 1789 so we're like we're like way back when women don't really have a say don't really have a voice and Martha Ballard has made a place for herself in this community as a midwife and as somebody who's respected for their medical opinion even though she wasn't a doctor and didn't have that full background. She's called upon when they find a body in the river. She's the one that they call to kind of give the first initial sort of autopsy of him. When another woman in town claims that she had been raped, Martha Ballad really stands up for her and supports her in that, even though others have turned against her. I loved the relationship between Martha and her husband and how that was portrayed. Even Martha and her kids and how she just wasn't a perfect person by any means. She was not glorified to be this perfect person. She was very human and made some mistakes and had flaws, was quick to be impulsive at times. She just felt so real and she was a real person. So I just really, really enjoyed learning about this person. So she's not exactly a fictional character, but the fictionalized version of her that Ariel wrote about in this book, I really loved. Number 10 is like a joke <laughs> because it's a book that made you cry this year. And if you have been around here for any length of time, you know that a lot of books make me cry. <laughs> I cry very easily in books and I love it when an author can evoke emotion out of me and make me get to that point where I care enough about the characters to cry. But I'm going to just talk about Rain Rain by Anne Martin, Anne M. Martin, because I specifically remember reading this right at the beginning of Middle Grade March when Amanda and Katie and I all got together in the DC area. I was reading it one morning. They, I, I started early because I was the first one up and we just kind of had a slow morning and I finished the whole book in the morning and I, of course, was a mess. <laughs> in this one, we follow a young girl named Rose who has autism, spect autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and she is obsessed with homonyms and we just follow her in school and her relationship with her dad and her dog and her uncle. And the dad is a single dad really kind of struggling, doesn't know how to connect with his daughter at all. And the uncle is kind of wonderful and he does know how to connect with her. But then there's a big storm that comes in, the dog goes missing, she tries to find the dog and makes it, like it, she makes some choices at the end that I just was so impressed with from any child, let alone someone who struggles making connections at times. And I loved watching her grow and change throughout this book. And it just grabbed my heartstrings and I absolutely cried and it was beautiful. Highly recommend. Oh, it was so good. Number 11 is a book that made you happy this year. And I think this year I'm in my kind of older protagonist mystery <laughs> era. I really enjoyed these two books, The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax by Dorothy Gilman, about a 60-something woman who 
has always wanted to be part of the CIA. And then she's like, what am I waiting for? And she just marches into the CIA office to try to get a job there and is mistaken for somebody else and is sent on a mission. <laughs> so we follow her as she goes on her first mission in this book. And there were laugh out loud parts. There were some parts that were just kind of ridiculous, but she was such an enjoyable character. And I thoroughly enjoyed reading this book. And also Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto, another book with a 60 something woman who owns a tea shop, comes down one morning to find a dead guy on the floor of her shop. She calls the police, but before she does that, she kind of takes the, the flash drive that she found in his hand and then is determined to, to solve the mystery on her own because she kind of doesn't think the police are doing a really good job of it. And she's convinced that anybody that comes to her shop is a suspect because they're returning to the scene of the crime. So this one involves a little bit of a found family, but this one also had me laughing out loud. She was kind of ridiculous, but also quite endearing to me. And I just really, really loved these slightly older women solving mysteries. I was here for it this year. Number 12 is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year. I have so many <laughs> books that I just think are really beautiful. So I'll just highlight two. Uh, this is one of my favorite types of a cover where there's just designs all over and it's symmetrical and it's really pretty. This one has flowers and mushrooms and also creepy like hands reaching out. <laughs> I'm not thrilled about the creepy hands, but in general, this is just kind of the type of cover that I really love. I love the purple. So Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett is book one of a new series and I'm curious to read it. It's kind of cozy fantasy, I believe. And the other one is also sort of a cozy fantasy and that's Tress of the Emerald Sea. I love the foiling on here. It's a little shimmery, but what I really love is this inside cover, like the end papers I think are gorgeous. I love a book with a silhouette. I just think this is simple, understated, but also really cool. And it's, she comes from an island called The Rock because it's all rocky. So I think it's funny that she's standing on a rock there and, and the, the sea is there as well. I just, I think it, it fits the book and it's beautiful and I love it. So those two are books that I've bought this year that I think have beautiful covers. The final question is, what do you need to read by the end of the year? I mean, all the things. I want to read so many things by the end of the year, but I did pull out two. I am, I'm, I'm about a third of the way into Words of Radiance, taking my sweet time with this, reading it in and, am, in and amongst everything else that I'm reading. I really should just sit down and dive in and finish it. And I may just do that in July because I, I really want to read this. The first book, Way of Kings, was my favorite book last year. So I definitely want to continue with Words of Radiance, but I need to just, I need to just do it. I need to make the commitment to just do it. And also, I would love to read Tolstoy in the Purple Chair, My Year of Magical Reading by Nina Sankovich. I received this as a gift from Tia, Genres and Journals, I think is her channel Instagram name now. She read this after experiencing a grief and her a loss in her life. And she said it was very meaningful to her. And so she sent it to me after the loss of my brother. And it's something that I have read one essay so far. It's like a little collection of essays in here. Um, so I would like to read this before the end of the year. And that is it. That is my mid-year book freak out. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not freaking out. So that's the mid-year book freak out tag. I would love to hear from you what was a big surprise for you. I think that's such a fun question because we all enter books with some sort of expectation of what we're going to get when we're reading it. And I would love to hear about a book that surprised you this year. So answer that down in the comments below or anything else that you want to talk about. I always love talking with you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.